Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of Little Liturgies, an online prayer to help you during your time of at-home or at-school learning. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. So, my friends, as we gather together for our Little Liturgy, we're going to hear another uh, healing story from the Gospel of Mark. Last week, we heard the man uh, who had the unclean spirit, and Jesus healed him. And now we're going to hear uh, about Jesus healing the mother of one of the disciples. So as we hear this healing story, we are invited to bring to Jesus anything that might need healing in our lives. You know, how have we treated God, others, and ourselves? Have we been kind, compassionate, gentle, forgiving? You know, for those times when we not, have not lived up to our call of love, let us ask the Lord for his mercy, his healing, and his peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we gather together as the Little Liturgy family, we give you great thanks and praise for the message of healing that you wish to give to us. Help us to share this message of healing with all those around us. Through our care, our compassion, forgiveness, our mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So my friends, today's gospel reading is from the gospel of Mark. It's chapter 1, verses 29 to 39, and uh, it's on page 1153 of the Catholic Youth Bible. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's, Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her and she began to serve them. That evening, at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak, because he knew them. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up, and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found, them, found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Some of friends, in today's Gospel reading, we hear, well, not just one healing story, but a whole multitude of them, because Jesus heals the mother-in-law of Simon, who later becomes Peter, and then word spreads and people just start coming just as the sun is coming down to Jesus. And he works through the night to heal people that are brought to him. I would, have you ever had to stay up through the night, my friends? Oh, I remember one time I had to go to the, I went with a friend to the hospital because uh, her mom was sick. And we got there around oh, probably six o'clock and we stayed through the night uh, to do so. And I was so exhausted by the end. I was just like, 
I need to go to bed. I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, you get tired and you can't really think straight. I was like, I gotta go, I gotta go home and I gotta go to bed. And yet that's not what Jesus does. Jesus, after healing all of those people, goes off to a quiet place, prays, and doesn't fall asleep like I would have. And then when the disciples found him, he's like, let's go to the next town. Like, that's pretty intense. Like, Jesus is really driven to bring his gospel message um, to the next towns. But what, what is this gospel message? Well, there's a reference to it at the very beginning. Well, not the very beginning, but near the very beginning of the gospel of Mark. I'll read it to you. It's like two sentences. It is on verses... 14 and 15 of chapter 1. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, and this is the key part, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. So what does that mean, like repent and believe in the good news? Well, we're going to hear that in a little while. Um, on the 14th of February, when we start the Lenten season, which will be um, 40 days, not including Sundays, of preparation for Jesus' cross, death, and resurrection, Easter. And you know, it wouldn't be the first thought of my mind to think good news and repenting of my sins, but that's the message that Jesus wants to give. Like, he, yes, he wants to heal us and our bodies, as we heard in this gospel reading, but it sounds even more important for him to go out and proclaim this message of repentance. But why? Well, Jesus knows that even if our bodies are 100%, like we feel young and strong, and we're eating good food, we're getting lots of great sleep, that doesn't necessarily mean we will treat each other well. Um, we need to experience, you know, to recognize how sin impacts our lives and to be healed from that so that we can live our lives in unity, in community, in care with one another. And this, this desire to create that sense of, of unity and, and share that gift of God's love with everyone, to help them to really know how we're supposed to spend our time here in this life uh, with one another, really pushes Jesus on. He wants, he wants you and me to know, my friends, that we are called to be people of love. Yes, he wants us to be healthy and to flourish and grow, but he wants us to especially know that we are called to live in loving relationships with God, others, and ourselves. That's what really drives him on. And so, my friends, as we um, hear these initial stories from the Gospel of Mark, and in the not too long, celebrate uh, Ash Wednesday and start our Lenten journey, let us reflect upon how we can be more loving in our relationships with one another. Is there a particular relationship that you struggle with, my friends? Let us ask for Jesus' help. Let us ask for that healing that we need, or maybe someone else needs, so that they may feel less isolated, more connected with others, find a way to be able to use their gifts and their talents for love and service of others. What a beautiful gift it would be, my friends, if during this Lenten season that we are approaching, we experience the healing that we all need to be the people of love that God has made us to be. So my friends, so let's share then our prayers uh, with God and ask for that, for that healing. Our response would be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray, my friends, for an awareness in our own lives about what we need repentance for, how we may have bruised our relationships with one another, and to ask for God's mercy and wisdom so that we may be people of, of great love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Let us pray, my friends, for all those who are sick or suffering. We hear how Jesus wants to bring healing to everyone. Let's pray for all of the sick that they may be, may be restored to fullness of life. We also pray for all those who are caregivers for the sick, you know, our, our wonderful doctors and nurses and first responders, but also family and friends who care for their loved ones, that they may be strengthened in their beautiful work of imitating Jesus and his healing love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray, my friends, for all those who are experiencing um, injustice or war or violence, that peace may come to those countries, those communities, those families, those hearts, our hearts, so that we may live our lives in love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray, my friends, um, for our Lenten journey, which will be here in no time. Let us pray that it may be an encounter with Jesus and his great love, and that we may grow in the holiness that we are all called to have in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lastly, my friends, let us pray for all of our loved ones who have died. Jesus, through his cross, death, and resurrection, has drawn them into the communion of love in heaven. So we know that they are at peace, and we share with them our words of love in our heart. And, and one day, when it is our time, we will join them there. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers together, my friends, let us say the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. So my friends, thank you so much for spending another episode of Little Liturgies with me. Um, I hope that you are gearing up for the Lenten season. It's going to be great. I know I used to think Lent was like, oh, I have to give something up. This is boring. But really, I, I really look forward to Lent now because I know it's a time when we can experience God's graces in our lives. So I'm really, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the Holy Spirit does for me, for you. And um, yeah, and I look forward to sharing that beautiful journey of Lent with all of you. Before we go, School of the Week. So I've got a couple of questions about the names that I put into here. So just to clarify, I took the names of all of the schools. There's a, there's a school list on ECSD uh, that has all the school lists listed. I took that list and I added all the schools here. So we got everybody, elementary, junior high, senior high, we're praying for them. And today we're going to pray for, oh, St. Francis Xavier High School. Yay! Congratulations, St. Francis Xavier High School. Perhaps some of you have brother, older brothers or sisters at St. Francis. Love St. FX. Um, so let us ask the Blessed Mother to pray for all of our students, teachers, and staff at St. FX. But of course, we ask her to pray for all of our schools. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, my friends, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.